Welcome to In the Gutters. I'm Wallcrawler1. And my name is Turk182. With special guest, the Comey. Hey everyone, how are you? Thought you got rid of me, eh? I was our... hoping that we had not because we love you so much. This is our third part in our Watchmen retrospective <laughs> series. And we're going to talk about, we don't, I think we just decided... Uh, Manhattan. Yeah. Dr. Manhattan. Doc Manhattan. Uh, Blue Doc, boy. Yeah, Doc Manhattan is... Uh, he's, uh, he's got a big blue head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought you were going to say feet. <laughs> I remember uh, like when the movie was about to come out, and I figured somebody posted something somewhere, and they were like, yeah, I can't wait to see Doc Manhattan rock out with his cock out. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're not joking, buddy. You yeah. know, the, you know the, the sad part about that is, in the comic, it's not as comical. In the, in the movie, I think people are just like, oh, it's a pee-pee, hee-hee-hee. And, and like, that's not the point. He's just so above... Our, he he doesn't need clothing because yeah. to him he's above that he's above those base ha ah, it's your naked type yeah, feelings yeah. and that's the point of it yeah but people well, just don't know how to process the complexity of Watchmen and I think it shows a lot more in the movie than it does in the book because <laughs> most people who like who can't process it aren't gonna take the time to read the book that's true but that's they true. would take the time to watch the movie. It's but, just like we've talked about. Well, sorry, I keep interrupting, but uh, no, it's, fine. it's just like we've talked about before with like the opening monologue from Rorschach, and it always gets a laugh out of people who aren't serious about the story when he says that the city is an abattoir of retarded children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just did that just for the minute. So yeah, I, I think it's the same thing where. Uh, people who aren't really in this to take the story seriously, are, of course, are going to laugh because hi, big blue penis. But well, you tell you could just tell your story about the Avatar, like when you went to go see it. Yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. That was, we were sitting there and they're doing the thing, and and he's like, you know, like you just said, the city is Avatar. You know, it's like an Avatar full of retarded children, and you hear people like. <laughs> like you don't even know what an abattoir is. Yeah. You're yeah. like, yeah, there's this whole story about the, the guy who killed the abattoir and he hung it around his neck. But like, okay, get the fuck out. No, no, not out of the theater, off this planet. <laughs> Please go. <laughs> we no longer want you here. And that's uh, not an insult to the charter children. It's an insult to the people that don't know what abattoir means. Yeah. <laughs> but right, they, they don't get that. Um, but I was going to say Manhattan, you were talking about like he was kind of above that. I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, though, he's like, I'm going to rebuild my body into, like, the ultimate, like, <laughs> symbol of, like, physical fitness and, like, peak perfection. He's just, he's just trying to, like, rub it in people's faces, basically. Yeah, Literally. Yeah. <laughs> and he can't, too. He's a big guy, and he's good with knots. Hey, Lori, look at this. Look at this. TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> Yeah. But no, I, I mean, he like, up top, up top of the table, like, and he's like, "Magic Mike ain't got nothing on me." <laughs> okay, now see, when I was making these points, I forgot who I was talking to, so never mind. <laughs> All my points are just invalid now, or are they more valid than ever? <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, no, I mean, ultimately, you're right. He's like, he's beyond all of that. It's just like, like, like when he's like, when he says, um, the like. The government wants to make me think it's like they say I need a symbol, so if I'm going to wear one, I'll wear one I respect. respect yeah. and, and he burns a symbol into his forehead that that the people are going to look at, be like, "What the hell is that? Why do you put a bullseye on his head?" But like, uh, yeah, but he's like, "I don't give a shit what you if you don't know what it is." Yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, but that's the thing is like he's like he's a he's above whatever they think that they know, and it's like, okay, that's fine. A big blue smart guy, big blue brain guy. <laughs> In, there's a there's a something about being that smart. Well, I, okay. So first off, let me back up and say I'm not going to say that Doctor Manhattan is necessarily a very smart guy. John Osterman was a pretty smart guy, mm -hmm. but Manhattan is just omniscient. Yeah, and like, does he have a sim, semi omnipotent cosmic powers? Right. Basically, yeah. <laughs> so that doesn't necessarily make him smart. It's just transcendence. You know? He's seen things and knows things that we could possibly understand because he's been exposed to them. He's he. I mean, he had to rebuild himself from a molecular level. How yeah. could you do that? I mean, you see what I'm saying? It's like 
uh, even if you even if you'd had the same and that that's that I wonder I've wondered this could anybody else that wasn't as smart as him done what he did to reconstruct himself. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Hell no. I would have forgotten something like I would have been I would have walked around five for a while and then I quickly like, oh shit, I didn't have a spleen. <laughs> Excuse me, what is it? It's like what's that gangly again? Do I need one of those to live? <laughs> Why do I only have nine toes now? <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna tell you right now, three testicles does not give you a bigger penis. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, I mean, it's it's funny that like even when you become a god, you still need to get laid. Like, <laughs> why why would he even need that to begin with? Like, if you're above everything, why? But I still need to get you know that was the glory. Only, that, was the only, that was that was like making him human. That was like his only connection to the real world. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. He basically says that after Lori leaves him. So, hey, Lori, charge my battery. <laughs> <laughs> But but no he I mean he does he like builds himself from the inside out yeah, yeah. And, and I, I there's no way I could do that no I mean like that's it's inc- yeah so, uh, but there is so much to so I'm gonna say there's there's so much to Osterman before he even becomes Manhattan mm-hmm. yeah that uh, again I think for me it all ties into like the whole thing about here is someone else that is missing a a father figure or some kind of like role model or mentor because his first role model is his father mm-hmm. and in the you know the whole thing with Osterman and Manhattan is that it, it's almost like almost like a self fulfilling pro- um, a prophecy. I'm sorry, did you see Modoc just then? I, 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 that's that's, <laughs> that's all I was thinking about when I saw. It. I was like, I, I don't really collect Legos, but I want that. Yeah, I love <laughs> Modoc. He's awesome, uh, but. Um, but he becomes the thing that his father basically said, like, now they've done this, the world is over. And he's yep. like, what? And he's like, yeah, and now I've become the thing that my father said destroys the world. But, yeah. you know, his father is like his, his mentor, his guy. He's his lead. But then when they create, was it the, was the atom bomb or the hydrogen bomb? Um, it was whatever Einstein did. Uh, I think that was the atomic. Yeah, I'm um, pretty sure it was the atom bomb. And then his, because his father was a watchmaker. And he's teaching his son how to be a watchmaker um, and do, I guess, watch repair. And um, and then when he do that, he's like, you know, like this is the end of the world. This symbolizes the end of the world. And he grabs the parts that he's working on of all the little uh, cogs and gears and throws them out the window. And it's like, you know, there's no point in you studying any of this stuff. Like, you know, like it's all over now. Yeah. Yeah, because here it is. Um, uh, he reads the newspaper. <clears throat> And uh, he says, they dropped the atomic bomb in Japan. The whole city's gone. He goes, these are no time for, uh, these are no times for a repairer of watches. You know, this changes everything. There will be more bombs. They are the future. Uh, shall my son follow me into an obsolete trade? He goes, I'm doing what's best for you. This atomic science, this is what the world will need, not pocket watches. You know, as Professor Einstein says that time differs from place to place. And can you imagine? Which is guy exactly like his father pretty much said, I want you to become this. I want you to become Dr. Manhattan in a sense. Yeah. And he goes, if time is not true, what purpose to have watchmakers? Um, and he goes, my profession is a thing of the past. Instead, my son must have a future. And so he he throws all those all the gears that, which is why he also makes his his Martian castle, you know, mm-hmm. made out of out of gears. But at that point, his he like his connection to his father is gone. He's like, this is what I do, and my life and my career thing is over. So. In order for you to have a life and a career, you have to be different yeah. or pursue a different path than me that I can't take you down because I have no idea what it is. Yeah. And so at that point, he's chasing, almost in a sense, he's like chasing Einstein or looking towards him to become something because he doesn't have anything. So what I think is also interesting to where you talk about the guy that doesn't have a connection to anything. Well, I think his connection or where he starts losing his connection to the world is at that moment, right? Or to humanity is at hmm. that moment right there when he no longer has a connection to his dad who almost eventually, essentially cuts him off yeah, emotionally. Yeah. And then he's, that's it. It's, it's interesting. He's got this common ground with Laurie and that his, his parents <clears throat> basically chose his career for him. Well, and, the, and yeah. then also like the, the, like you're talking about like the, the symbol and stuff, like, cause it was Captain Adam. You know, yeah, yeah. So because because we're going all the Carlton comics, so like you know, his symbol is a little bit different than. So he wanted to go with his own, you know. But in a sense, right? He's he's still. I mean, that's what the atomic symbol. He's still Captain Adam. You know? Yeah, Hydr- Yeah, hydrogen. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, 
like that that does I think set him on the path of being detached from humanity. But really, I don't think he's that broken of a person before he becomes Doctor Manhattan. Well, I, I, I was I think he's 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 looking for something that he <clears throat> that he's he's I he's looking for something uh, or maybe a connection or a new connection. And instead of making that connection with a person, he makes it with science. Yeah. Until he meets um, Jamie. Jamie. And then at that point, then he starts to you know make a, a connection with her. But then even that, the, the everything with Janie Slater, like that would last was what a couple weeks before he locks himself inside the intrinsic field by accident. Um, I guess so. Uh, no, I guess they, maybe a little bit longer than that. Cause they, they've um, been a while for they've been together for a while. No way. Um, you know, you know one thing that's different. You know, the movie's different from the book. But like one thing that I didn't catch as much that went through really well with the the movie was the way he was just so monotone and mm-hmm. what he was talking about. So matter of fact of all the events of his life, yeah, yep. that played out so well in the movie. Even when I was reading it, I don't think I would have thought of it like that. Yeah, know? yeah. So hold on. Um. No, guys, just a couple of months because it says here that it's May, 20, May 12, 1959, my first day at Gila Flats, and uh, that's when he meets Wally Weaver. And then he says, it's August uh, of 1959, we've been back from Jersey a month, and in my future, the accident is waiting. And so, like, shortly after that, the accident happens. So they've only been together for a couple months. Yeah. Before, you know, before he he has his accident, so... It's uh, like they, 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 even they, if they made a connection, they haven't made a really strong connection. And even though they stay together after that, at that point, though, he is Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Like, so they're still not building a connection any further. <clears throat> hmm. Interesting. Yeah, but his, so his only, his only real connection to the world then is science. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Which, but then science is something that's based off of cold facts. Yep. Facts have, you know, emotion has no place in facts. Which is why he's like, yeah, this it is what it is. He still like the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting because he knows how his actions are going to impact people. He just doesn't know why they care. Where it's like, okay, well, yeah, I did this, and you're upset, but so like, why? Why are you still upset about this? We've talked about it, so get over it. And yeah, well, when you got a scientific mind. It's not necessarily an emotional mind. So, like, all these things that we say are nightmares that they do with experiments and the way they look at people, Mm -hmm. it's just because it is kind of like an evil... I think they do think they're evolved enough to where they can look down on everything because they feel like they're here. I mean, it takes that kind of mentality almost sometimes. There's definitely a level of detachment there, for sure. uh... Yeah, I I definitely agree with that because you have to, um, you know, like... You want me to find a cure for this thing? Well, that means I'm going to have to do this. You right, know, right. And, like it's, you can't see you, and it's, it sounds <clears throat> horrible. And I'm not saying that I necessarily subscribe to this, but it's like, okay, you want me to find a cure for whatever it is? Then I've got to try all these different things. Like, let's say uh, it's a cure for cancer. Right. Well, obviously, you want me to just keep testing out on a bunch of like human people with cancer. The idea is to save them and prolong their lives. So that means I got to give I've got to give cancer to these like little fluffy bunnies and you know and chimpanzees and dogs and you're like and, you know and this well wait a minute you can't do that that's not right and mm-hmm. I'm gonna dissect them I'm gonna do all this stuff it's like okay well to tell me do you, do you want to have a cure for cancer right this yeah. is how we get one you right. know? and to avoid lawsuits we want the hair to fall out of the bunny instead of you so you can't sue us <laughs> into oblivion they're not bunnies aren't litigious so you know so far. <laughs> so it's, will it's, be. Like, yeah. it's like what do you what do you want me like what do you want me to do here? But right. like, but then I can make that call. Like have you ever seen um oh shit, what's the name of that movie? Um Oh shit, it's the um uh it's the what is it, the imitation game. Is that it? Imitation I've game? Not seen that. Um Let me just make sure that's the one I'm thinking of. Um uh, Yeah with uh Sherlock? Yeah, that's what oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, so, yeah. They, so, the Imitation Game is the story of, our, of uh, Alan Turing when he 
creates the Enigma, the, the huge, basically the world's first computer that they used to decode the um, the Enigma uh, device or the machine, so they can listen to all the the Nazis' uh, encrypted uh, messages. Yeah. And so, really, really good movie. Yeah, it's pretty <clears> good. Um, but the, it's, sad, um, it's sad what happens to him. Yeah. But in that, there's a scene in there where they're like, okay, well, now that we've cracked the Nazi code, uh, their, you know, their uh, encrypted code, we have to decide, like, which of their plans we're going to let go through mm -hmm. and which ones we're going to stop. And because uh, and they're like, we can't foil everything. Yeah. Because they're going to know they, that we've cracked all. the code. Yeah. And then right, they're going to change right. the code. So, and then the military, according to the movie, they just passed off to him. It's like, you're going to be the one that decides. <laughs> And at one point, this guy, he's like, he's the guy is it, is somebody's, like somebody's related to somebody that's on one of the, the, the was it a submarine? Yeah, it was like a submarine, like yeah, a ship. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, my brother's, he's like, I just found that you're going to let, you're going to let this ship go down and be sunk by the Nazis. Yep. Like, yeah. My brother's on that ship. And he's like, yeah, but if we, it's like, we're saving these two right here. If we save that one, it's going to tip them off. He's like, so you're going to let my brother die? He's like, Yeah. Just like I let all these other people die. Right. It's like I get this, your brother, but and you have a stronger connection, but you didn't have any problem with, with these the other, other things. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if you want to win this war, we've got to make these choices. And he was like, "You're a bastard. You're so unfeeling." It's like, okay, yeah, you know. But me, me. <laughs> so, but right, who, who was right, the girl like, in the movie? Like Karen uh, Knightley, I believe. Was it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's so it's like you have to you have to be the one to make the hard calls. Just like we were talking about yesterday with the, with Walking Dead, right? right it's like right. Rick makes the hard call there, and is like, and none of you guys can do it. And you may want to call me a bastard after I've done it, but or even before I've done it. But the fact that you couldn't, yeah, is exactly yeah. why I had to be the one to pull the trigger, both figuratively and literally. So <laughs> it, it's it's science. But then you, when you look at Doctor Manhattan, he's that hard call guy. Right, you know, he says right. he's like. Yeah, I can let this happen, and I'm not going to stop it. Not just because I already know it happens, but also because it has to. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, and, 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 and in, in, in essence, Vite, you know. Yeah, the, the whole the whole thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, and he says multiple times throughout the story, he's like, "I know the future, but I can't pre prevent the future." Yeah. It's like this is this is how it's going to happen. You're you're going to tell me this bit of information. I'm going to be surprised by it, even though I know that you're going to tell me. So, uh, Walcrawl, you were just talking a minute ago about you know just the the kind of just flat matter of fact like monotone way that he talks in the movie, mm -hmm. and it's interesting because like for Manhattan, he knows that eventually he's going to go to Mars. Mm -hmm. Well, first he's going to go back to Gila Flats. He's going to get the last photograph of him and Janie, yep. you know, before the accident. And he's going to do this whole, like, I'm going to, like, this nostalgia, again, the whole nostalgia thing. And I'm going to look back and uh, on everything that happened in my life. But also, when you're reading here, when you're listening to it, he's not looking back in fondness with, like, these memories. No, like no. He, it, he's, he's just saying... This shit happened. It's a chrono. Yeah. It's a chronological order of the th events that happened, and even his relationships. There's no reminiscing, as in like fondness or like 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 uh, uh, what's the term where he, he's looking back and like happy about it. He's yeah, like right. this this stuff happened. Right. <laughs> and when he when he drops the the photo and he leaves it on Mars, you see, you're, you're like, dude, that's that's your last connection. But again, it's it's almost in the sense where he's like, you know. This photograph, you know, has the same like amount of atoms as this memory, right? It, and, yeah. they, and neither one of them mean anything to me at all. What 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 is it? She's looking at. Didn't he do a replica of the snow globe thing? Isn't that part of it? No, like, he gives her uh, the nostalgia perfume. Okay, but but isn't there a scene where she's looking into the the globe, and then like uh? Yeah, it's when, it's when she goes when Lori goes and uh, when her and her, her mom and her stepdad are having the argument, she goes into. Her mom's like her office, yeah. and she's looking at the and she's looking at snow globe, so, and then her mom comes in there and is like, "What are you doing in here?" And she drops it and it breaks. Yeah, and then and that's the, the metaphor. For, yeah, that's, that's that's exactly what happens on Mars. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting, like when you look at this like Manhattan, like it's not everything just becomes. So we keep saying he's like devoid of emotions, like they're attached, but it's just it's more of just like everything's so matter of fact for him. It's, yeah. So it's not. It's like if these things are going to already take place. Why would I have to have any emotional connection to them? Why should I have an emotional connection to something I have absolutely no control over? Mm -hmm. And the, and it is what it is. Well, so. it's also that like 
he experiences emotion when it's predetermined that he will. And it's, it's just like he tells Lori, he says, you're going to tell me that you're sleeping with Dryberg, and I'm going to be surprised. And I'm going to be upset. The, the, the one time he kind of breaks is like, with those reporters, you know, leave me alone! Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's like, ah! I, but I, well, it, I was going to say, I wonder if there was something more to that, but but then that was, uh, that was Adrian, you know, setting everything up. Because he's like, I knew that the only way I could trigger an emotional response from him was, the was woman. to do all this stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. And and it's right after um, Lori goes off with Dan, which then goes back to the whole thing of like, do you think he purposely, that comedian finding the island was not an accident, but it was... On purpose. It seems like it would almost have to be like planned. I really do right. think it would have to be. Because how do you stumble on that? You know, it's yeah. like I that's think, what sends that's what sends Rorschach um, to. Which I mean, that's another question we have too. But that's what sends Rorschach to go to Manhattan and uh, and Lori. Yeah. And then she's like, "Oh, he's dead." You know, which which something else was interesting. And like like Manhattan's always like. Oh yeah, Edward Blake is dead. It was like he, yeah. he already knows. And, but, and, and, and then she goes to see Dan, and then that starts the whole thing with with her and Dan, which then um, which then leads into everything else. So if what we're saying is true, though, we know we were talking about like the puppets and the strings. Was the string really cut? Because Manhattan had to do everything that Bite wanted to happen anyway. But right. I mean, I think I think Manhattan knew pretty much everything up until the squid appeared because that's the only point where he's like, I don't know what happens next. Yeah. But everything else, he just like spells it out. He says, I see myself killing somebody in the snow, all that. Yeah. I think as far as Vite goes, I think he had contingency plans for pretty much anything. I think that it's kind of like a Batman thing of He didn't he didn't he didn't see him self killing somebody in the snow. Um Manhattan did, yeah. He tells he tells Lori that it's unclear. He sees a lot of people in New York dead. He says, "I see myself killing someone in the snow." Well, see, I got a problem with that because he can't he can't see anything after the squid. He says it's vague. But I'm saying, but he just doesn't know specifically who. Yeah, he doesn't. Okay. He doesn't, so he doesn't say mention any names because because I was going to say if he can't see anything after the squid, that's after the squid. Well, so so are all the dead New Yorkers that he sees. He just says that it's vague, but he's getting okay. faint images. Uh, but I was gonna say that so, if if you kill comedian to make to make Rorschach go and make the pay the visit, which then sends her to Dan, which then starts to make that that connection between her and Dan, which then leaves Manhattan alone, or starts to create that that uh, that moment where Laura realizes that oh hey I miss humanity I miss being around people, mm-hmm. which leaves him alone then when he goes to the television studio. Which is that added, like, little piece of humanity along with everything else, Wally and Janie. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's almost like he would have had to have planned all that stuff. And it's like, you, I, I needed you to see the island, to investigate, to create this response so that all these other pieces, these uh, dominoes it, could fall that, I, I, I was just going to say, that is a... Big damn domino chain, man. Yeah, it is. That, Holy crap. That's why I think he had multiple contingency plans. I think he had to have plans for, like, well, what if Rorschach's the one who finds shit out first? But no, it's chapter 9, page 18, panel 1. Beyond that, events grow even sketchier. I'm standing in deep snow. I'm killing someone. Their identity is uncertain. And then he starts talking about more of the Martian landscape. Okay. And yeah, the panel right before that on page 17, he talks about how there's static obscuring the future, preventing any clear impression. That that's fine. I, I was I was like, wait a minute, now that's and not that I was gonna be, they, I wouldn't expect to be a, a huge flaw in this. I mean, after like you know, like <laughs> I think forty years, it, yeah, yeah. That's but, the thing, man. How solid it all is. It's I mean, airtight. It's it's hard to crack. So all right, so look at this. I'm looking at the page here where you know he's putting the watch together, mm-hmm. and he's putting the watch together and you know this old fashioned like wrist watch well pocket watch I guess, at, at the time yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, which is kind of cool if you think about it that you know his dad was into that and like all this yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's neat but all of that it's 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 precision it's taking mm-hmm. all the little pieces and making sure they all fit perfectly for this thing to run the way it needs to be 
just like Vite's plan. Mm-hmm. It's like all these little pieces need to be exactly need to be need to be put in the right in the right spot for this thing to run the way it's supposed to be and run smoothly for it to for it to be what I want. But it, it, it's cool because like what his dad wanted him to be, he transcends time. Yeah, you know, and that, that that's that's so cool. It's like you start from the it's it's almost like uh you're starting at atom level and just expanding out to like the cosmos. You know, it's it's it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah, like, transcendent. So, so I need to read Adrian's like final monologue. Cause... This is this is almost. Uh, I'm sorry. Like this is almost why I can't write off all more completely. Because I mean, it's so good. Man. Right, yeah, <laughs> when you no, start it's... talking about it, you just get sucked into it so easy. Sorry, yeah, I didn't interrupt you. No, no, it's fine. It's it's so airtight. It is so airtight. But I was looking here at like when Manhattan goes to Mars, and so, uh, so. Kind of stepping back here, you know, he's Manhattan's got this this TV appearance that he's going to be going to, and that's kind of what sets everything off with him going to Mars. And I love, you know, the uh, when he's going to when he gets there, and and uh, when he gets there, and then they're like, you know, this shade that you know, like you know, that shade of blue won't show up on camera and stuff, and then he's like. Is this better? And it was like, he, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken myself for you. It's like it, it doesn't mean anything to me. Like whatever, I don't care. Um, but then, <clears throat> um, but then they're sitting there talking, they're asking these questions, and then they, you know, they bring out uh, the one guy starts asking about um, about Wally dying of cancer, and he's like, yes, you know, that was unfortunate. Wally was a good friend, uh, and then Moloch having cancer, um, and then um, and then Janie, and. But then when he, when the guy says, uh, he's, he tells him that, he goes, and he's like, Jane, he goes, but I wasn't told. Like, there is this kind of stir of humanity there. Mm-hmm. And I know that they, that in one part of it, when I, Vite's given his whole thing, he's like, yeah, I intentionally gave these people cancer. Did he also send about something about, about pumping something into the air in the TV studio? Because it's so that, that's not familiar to me. It's, but there was something, um, now that uh, you say that, that kind of sounds familiar. It uh, does. But the reason I'm asking is because, um, like, the whole thing with uh, with Manhattan is, as I'm, as I'm going through, I'm looking at this stuff, he leaves there and he goes to Mars. Well, okay. So, he le- first, first he sends everybody home, which yeah. I like that they put that in the director's cut yeah. um, of the movie. Because the original version, he just says, leave me alone, and he shows up on Mars. And it's so abrupt. Like, why would you just go to Mars? Like, you say, yeah. leave me alone, you go to Mars. But I like how in it they, like, you know, he teleports them all to their homes. Yep. And that's the thing. He doesn't just teleport out of the studio. He teleports them all to their individual homes. Yeah. And yeah. then some, I think somebody has a heart attack and dies. Like, hmm. they're finding themselves, like, just appearing in their homes. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I love uh, that. I, I like I like during the riot scene, too. He tells the people, he's like, okay, attention, everyone. You're going to return to your homes now. And they're like, we don't have to listen to you, you big blue fruit. And he's like, no, I, I wasn't asking. I was telling him. And they just disappear <laughs> the next panel. <laughs> it's like awesome. Yeah so, yeah, so in the comic book, he goes back to his place, and they're already labeling him as a, uh, as a radio... Uh, they they put in the radiation, and they're putting like a quarantine area and stuff. Yep. And then he says... Um, Tells him basically I'm leaving. It seems he goes. I'm seems I'm incapable of cohabitating safely either emotionally or physically. Perhaps you better tell Mistress Pesjik and your superiors that I'm leaving. And he's like, yes, for Arizona first, and think uh, I think, and then Mars. And he just goes. Mm-hmm. So the reason that uh, that I find this kind of curious is for a guy who is pretty much kind of devoid of humanity and is kind of you know uh, left emotion behind. He's very emotional in that scene involving Janie. Then he goes to Arizona, mm-hmm. and 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 the whole thing starts off as like, uh, "I gave Janie cancer. I didn't mean to." And I think it's all it's definitely all part of Vite's plan. But he's Doctor Manhattan. If he was radioactive in the slightest, he would have known about it. If yeah. he were giving them, if he were like giving them cancer, you know. Giving off radiation, but and he mentioned three people, but Wally had a lot of contact with. Janie had a lot of contact with. He only had contact with Moloch every once in a while when they would fight. And it's, man, it's Doctor Manhattan against a damn hypnotist, right? That's yeah. not really a fight. 
So, so there's something there that's obscuring his natural thought process yeah. to where he becomes that emotional. And then the first thing he does, he goes back to Arizona and picks up this picture and he's like, oh yeah, Janie. But then as he separates himself, as he gets to Mars and he's away from everybody, he's like, it's almost like he's, like he's thinking back on everything. He's like, why am I thinking back on this? This has no bearing on anything. And the picture just falls from his fingers and yeah. he just walks away. So yeah. it's, it's like he wasn't really in control of himself during that time period. Like somebody, like he was being manipulated to have these, these to feel that way mm-hmm. when really he didn't feel that way at all. And then he's like thinking back on everything. He's like, oh my goodness, did I have it? He's like, Janie, I remember loving her. And then, oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> he's, he's like, and now we now return you to our regular schedule program. Yeah. And um, I know that Vite mentions how he stole psychological records of Doc Manhattan. So he. He obviously knew the weak points, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, you can get, when you read this, pro, well, the problem is you probably saw the movie already, right? No, I read the book first. You read the book first, and so did well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But so when you read this, you didn't know Vite was the bad guy until pretty much near the end, right? Mm-hmm. Just like everybody else, mm-hmm. like like that scene. Where he kills the guy that that you know with yeah. the that throws you off so much. Yep, you're like, oh, there's somebody else, and like that's so. I've never heard anybody say that they figured it out before you're supposed to. That's hard to do, man. Oh yeah, it's you know what really gets me is when he kills like all the people that works for him, and they like cheers, and then he and he's in that little like the was like the solarium, and then he opens the door and lets him on. Now I'm Tim, I'm reading, I'm like. Why is he? Why is he letting all those people freeze? I mean, even still, I they didn't put together like, oh, he's the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, why are you letting all these people freeze to death, dude? Like, what? What did you do? And um, they even they even do it because he's he, at the early stages when he's trying to come together with, with like his plan for the group again, and um, comedian knocks him down. He just comes off as so sympathetic because he's got that expression like. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's interesting. I know we're more talking about Manhattan. I'm just trying to I'm trying to look at how he ties into Adrian's plan. But when Adrian was talking about um, why he started viewing things the way he did, he talks about his first encounter with the comedian, and the comedian fights him, quote, mistaking him for a criminal, air bunnies, <laughs> and he says that at that time the comedian won. In the short term, so. Uh, we talked about this, I think, on the Comedians episode, that Vite got rid of the Comedian because he knew he was the greatest threat to accomplishing the plan. Right. And I think that kind of verifies it, that, like, Comedian's the only one who could have actually beaten him, because Rorschach tries his damnedest and can't lay a finger on him. Oh, no. no. I wonder if, like, Comedian knew that he was too old at that point, though. Because, I mean, you saw what happened. I mean, if he could have taken him, I mean, I, he probably would. Or maybe he was just done at that point. Maybe he was just ready. Yeah, it could be. He was just... I mean, He'd also been drinking for days and crying his eyes out. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Plus, I mean, you know, it's like, again, if you, you know, going by what I was saying is that he knows the hand that he played in this. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't have a right to see this through to the end. You know, it's like, because it, it, again, what what happens then? Like, we just continue on with the same sick joke. Right. But Vite, Vite in, in essence, broke him, you know? If he was doing that because he's all distressed about what the plan was, then... Instead of, like, I think the old comedian would have just, I mean, if he thought he could have taken him, he should have, I guess he just knew that he was done, or he was just out. Yeah, yeah. He checked out. Yeah, it's just, it was that point that he realized it was all so much bigger than him. And that's what makes it weird with Manhattan is that, like, you know, it's it's the same thing where he knows, like, this is just the future, this is the inevitability. He was just kind of looking at everything as like, oh, this is what's going to happen. He knew, and he's just like, okay, it's a certain point. And then he's like, okay. Yeah. And I, and I think the other part of it is, you know, he fights, but he's, he fights because that's what he does, not because he actually expects to win or wants to win. It's just like, I have to, I'm going to put up a fight because it's what I do. I wonder right. if this, yeah. to a certain degree, has something to do with free will, too, you know, that whole concept of like, yeah, this, this, this is this what you guys are, this is what your piss ants do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Manhattan says pretty clearly that he doesn't believe in free will. No, oh, really? Yeah, because. Uh, but he doesn't. But he doesn't change anybody's. Uh, but he doesn't change anybody or try to talk them out of what they do. Like, 
That's kind of interesting. Yeah, because it's all the predetermined future. Yeah. It's like, I, I know that the comedian is going to kill this woman. Yeah. And I could stop him, but that's not how it happens. Yeah. Because uh, the, way, the way I understand it, Manhattan views past, present, and future simultaneously. Yeah. Which is why, to him, it's all predetermined. It's like, this exists at the exact same time. The future exists at the exact same time as the past. So it's interesting that he's got blocks on certain things. Like, he can only see to certain... Yeah. That doesn't... But, you know, that that, that goes in the mystery of what he is, too. Because, like, it's not... I mean, you wouldn't understand unless you were him. Yeah. I wish I wish we could, like, ask Alan more of this stuff. <laughs> Probably, I don't think you get a straight answer. He just no. messes with your mind. You end up in the corner somewhere. He'd just be really like critical. rocking. I was gonna. He'd probably just say, "Piss off!" Everything I wanted you to see is right there in the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If yeah, there's something, something more I wanted you to know, I would have written it in there. He just, yeah, he'd just make you feel really bad. <laughs> Fuck off, you wanker. Now, but like, all right. If we really want answers, we've got to trim that beard. <laughs> <clears throat> Have you bought my book, you bastard? <laughs> now, okay, that, that's the only way. That's the only way we'd be able to have a a sit down with Alan Moore <laughs> is we'd have to bring Wall Crawl and be like, "He read Jerusalem." No, <laughs> I listen. I listen to Jerusalem. Just shut it. Shut it. It's eighty. I think. I think I'm not exaggerating. I think it's eighty hours long, man. Wow, holy it's something shit. crazy like that. I mean, it took me weeks to listen to the damn thing, and it was. It was good. Or maybe maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it can't be 80. Maybe oh. it's 30. But it was ridiculous, whatever it was. But I was say, it's not like he's going to cast a truth spell see if you're telling the truth or not. <laughs> I mean, maybe. It's Alan Moore. D- depends on the branch of magic that he practices. But here's verification. <laughs> Vite didn't intend for the comedian to get involved. Uh, Rorschach says, Blake's murder. You confess. And Adrian says, confession implies penitence. I merely regret his accidental involvement. Returning from Nicaragua by air, he spotted a ship docking at an uncharted island, suspecting... And so then he just goes into the whole thing of why he got involved. Um, so it goes back to your thing about he had to have multiple plans. Yeah. Like contingencies, and, and it's just having to be like, oh, that's unfortunate. But I think either way, though, he was going to still kill him before... Yeah, yeah. Before things really got started. And, you know, Adrian, I mean, I guess besides the comedian, because I guess he had kind of like a, a grudge against him... I don't think he really wanted to kill, you know, Rorschach or, you know, Lori or any of them. I don't, I don't think he would have been torn up about it, but I don't think he really wanted to kill him, or he, he could have, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, that's why he let them, I mean, you know, he was going to let them live. Rorschach could have lived, but Rorschach was like, fuck this. Yeah. And so Manhattan's the one who killed him. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't even think that it, that Vite's aware that Rorschach is dead. Uh, I don't think so, because he goes off to meditate. Yeah. Well, because when he, in that last scene there, when, um... When Manhattan is talking to him, and uh, he's, he's he's in a meditating, and Manhattan goes in, he says, um, he goes, "What's the significance? Uh, uh, what's significant is that I know I've struggled across the backs. I'm sorry, yeah, struggled across the backs of murdered innocents to save humanity, but someone had to take that weight of the awful necessary crime. I'd hoped you'd understand. Unlike Rorschach, and then Manhattan says." You needn't consider Rorschach. I strongly doubt he'll reach civilization. Well, yeah. I mean, because you killed him. <laughs> well, that, well that, 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 that's a flaw, too. Like, that is one flaw, I'd say, because he kills Ror, or Rorschach or Kovacs, you know, whatever. But then he still allows the journal to get away. You see what I'm saying? Because then that, that, so he knows that's going to come out eventually, too. Yeah, I, but I, I don't know if Manhattan even knows about the journal, though. But that's what I'm saying. That, how could he not if he knows that's everything? That's in his gray zone. Yeah, how, how could he not know that, like, Rorschach was writing a journal? If he knows all this other stuff, why wouldn't he know that? Well, because well, fact... he only knows what's in his timeline. Yeah. Uh, because at that point, he's not in the universe. All of his knowledge of past, present, and future comes from what he's experiencing directly. But yeah. he is in that timeline because he's no, talking but, but to Rorschach. He's, he's not directly involved in what's in that story. It's only things that, that he's directly involved in that he can see. Huh, okay. Yeah, if you look at the Mars monologue, everything he talks about, past, present, and future, are what's directly impacting him. Hmm. And he'll say, it's 1944, I am doing this, I'm doing that. Um, so, so like still... the stuff that happens on Earth after he's gone, does it? It he doesn't still... retain to him. I would he imagine he doesn't. It. Yeah. I can't imagine that he would. But then, but then he's back and but he is in there. I guess because it's confusing because of the show. You see what I'm saying? Because the show, he's still around. Well, so like when he comes back to Mars and there is the and everything's um, comes back from Mars to Earth and he's like, "Hey, what happened here?" Right? I mean, he should know everything up to that point. 
but since he hasn't been on Earth, mm-hmm. and he's not, and he's not <clears throat> like experiencing that, or um, then he has no idea what's going on. So he's got to know on some level that, that him killing Rorschach ultimately meant nothing. Oh. Uh, because after, everybody after, finds his plan. That's what I'm saying. Event, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because when he comes back, I'm just going by the shows. Like, if you tie it into it, because like basically, like that just means I killed somebody for nothing because the plan went out anyway. So, yeah. no, I mean, I don't think John's mind works that way. I think for him, he didn't kill Rorschach specifically to preserve the plan. He did it because that's what was predetermined. He knew. But what, why this... would it be predetermined to kill somebody for no reason? I mean, that's because for him, it, 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 nothing has a reason anymore. He just knows he's going to do it. Yeah, yeah it's. Just well, I'm just. I'm just saying. Actions. It's like it's kind of. I mean, I get. I get it. Like because the show. I'm. I'm. I'm talking. I guess the show's what's fuzzy in it. Like it didn't fuzzy until the show because they. They that that's not like necessarily his intention anyway. So. So let's see. Yeah, I'm still looking through Adrian's monologue here. Um he says, John being too powerful and unpredictable to fit my plans needed removing, thus dimensional development. Hired his past associates. Uh, gave them cancer. Weaver first, Slater and Moloch later. Unwittingly exposed to radiation. They were closely observed, cultivated as weapons against John. And he goes off about uh, comedian finding the island and blah, blah, blah. What's the blah, blah, blah about finding the island? Though? Like... He- so he, right there, we were asking the question, did he know, was it intentional that he found it? No, so he, said, he said it wasn't. It wasn't, okay. Because he says, I merely regret his accidental involvement. Ah, uh, I gotcha. Yeah. Unable to unite the world by conquest. Uh, so him killing the comedian was clean up. Uh, I, think that, I think that goes in with the, uh, with the contingency plan stuff. That, like, comedian, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. he was clean up. What upset the comedian when awareness of my scheme crashed in upon him was professional jealousy. I regret his accidental involvement. I picture him swimming to the island, dagger and teeth, penetrating its installations. What he found must have come as a terrible blow. Imagine the perfect fighting man discovering a plot to an end of war. Ah, so it wasn't part of it. Okay, it wasn't part of it. It's just been, I mean, I haven't read it for three plus years, so... Yeah, I mean, the only reason I've got all this is stuff is because I've I listened through the motion comic within the past week. And got so. the book in your hand. <laughs> he was quoting that. He was just off the top of his head. It's like... <laughs> yeah, I just go into like this Rain Man trance and just recite it from heart. Definitely, definitely nostalgia. <laughs> Yeah, uh, although Paul exposed my plan. <laughs> uh, we overdue for a break, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, oh, 42 yeah. minutes in, yeah. No, I, guess we're, I guess we're at a good time for a break. All right. Yeah, so we'll take a small break and then be right back. So Here's something you can't understand, how I have this book in my hand. <laughs> All right, yeah, we can come back. Uh, so I, I just have a question that's not really uh, a part of any of this right here, but which, um, if you had to be a character from one of the the characters in The Watchmen, who would you be? Mm. Hmm. That's a tough one. They're all so... I'd be the newsstand owner. <laughs> yeah. The newsstand owner? That's who you'd be? I'd yeah. be Nixon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I'd want to be Walter. I, don't, I don't, definitely yeah. wouldn't be. Uh, even though I love Rorschach the most, I would not want to be him Hell at no. all. Good I don't, God. I don't want to be inside his brain. No, I want to be Bernie the newsstand owner. Yeah, that's probably a good answer. I don't want to be the psychologist, that's for damn sure. I want to be the, uh, I want to be the, the editor, editor-in-chief of the New Frontiersman. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I there didn't... actually is a... a, a, a a newspaper called the News for Frontiersman. They actually did that. <laughs> Alan Moore probably writes it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be my role in Watchmen. I'd be the fat guy who, who publishes Rorschach's journal and brings about Armageddon after all. It's his anti-comic propaganda <laughs> mag. <laughs> Fanzine. But yeah, he doesn't use his own name. He's like, the New Frontiersman, editor-in-chief, Lalan Roar. They're like, oh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> mm. No, honestly, if I had to, if I had to pick somebody, I think I'd probably go with Bite. Honestly, I, no. And as soon as you said it, that's exactly who. After thinking about it, I don't think they're. 
I don't think I would I think want, it'd be a fight. Yeah, I don't think I would want to have to have that burden of knowing, like, yeah, I'm responsible for the death of three million people. And I mean that's more that's more for Vite's episode for us to talk about, but like yeah, he he kinda knows that it's like, yeah, I'm kinda shouldering this burden. You know what? I changed my name to Boobastus. Just 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 by <laughs> <laughs> He didn't have to do shit. He just yeah, got like... Rrr. Except for the fact that you were created for the sole purpose of killing, like, you know, three million people. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the only reason why you exist. Not shit, that, my fault. That's the role I want. I want to be the squid. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I thought about that, too. The giant with a giant of squid that dies immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is just alive enough, has, has enough of, like, brain power to just die and scream in pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's my autobiography. <laughs> I was born like, in 1990 with just enough brain power to die and scream in pain. <laughs> like, you, you, you're alive long enough, not even to know you're alive, but to know you're dying. You're like, like, I'm here. I'm dying! <laughs> I noticed nobody even considered Night Owl. That's funny. I, I mean, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. just this fat, little <laughs> impotent dude yeah. who, who feels I mean, really insecure all the time. <laughs> Now, if any of us said Lori, that'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's, the, here's the bad thing about being night owl. Like, okay, even if, even if I'm alone, I don't have a girlfriend or whatever. At least, at least if I can get it up, I can still jack off. But you can't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting about night owl, even though this is not for this episode, is that you know he's out of shape. He's this, he's that. He's he's got an entire arsenal down in his basement. And he has the shittiest lock on his apartment. <laughs> yep. And he doesn't even fix the lock himself, which he's more than capable of doing. <laughs> and he's selling something better. But I think that also, like, I'm, I'm replacing the lock, but I don't want to create anything better because it's nice to have friends over. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, ultimately, he's shocked that Rorschach is there, but he's not really upset. He's like, hey, I haven't seen... Because the first thing is, he's like, he's like, hey, haven't seen you for a while, man. Like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> like, I can't Can wait I eat to... your beans up? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, a... <laughs> It's like uh, you know, it's uh, you know, you don't have to wait for like someone to die to come by and, <laughs> and have some beans, man. <laughs> mm. I, I love how casual it is when Rorschach breaks the locks because he just like walks through the door, just boom, and he's in. <laughs> hey, hey, Dan, you should get a better lock. <laughs> yeah, broke it with one shove, man. <laughs> you know what is interesting about about the, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that episode of. Uh, that episode of The Simpsons when uh, Bart and Lisa were playing hockey and and Milhouse is like, knock, 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 you have my teeth! <laughs> and Bart has his teeth. <laughs> it's like, he gets the button, right? And the, he carries the button, the smiley face button, all the way to the funeral. But he washes the blood off of it. Yeah. And he's carrying it, he even takes it to dinner with Lori. Yeah. Like, that's... Yeah, that's a little... That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but you cleaned it up. Like, you cleaned it up, and then you carried it with you, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to toss it in the grave there. Like, like I said, that, that's something for a friend's episode, but... Yeah. There's there's a lot to Dan, but yeah, no, he's not a character that I would want to be. I will say also that I, if I had a choice, Manhattan, but not because of, of Manhattan's powers, I... I you just he... want to be able to control the size of your dong. <laughs> Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything when sex has no emotion to me. It's all meaningless. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting off, but I didn't feel it. <laughs> it is 1967. I'm crying after sex. <laughs> uh, Those aren't tears. Oh. <laughs> I like that you don't even try to defend yourself anymore. You're just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I wish I still had that picture that you sent me of uh, Dr. Manhattan with the grill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten about that. <laughs> Why would I save a grill I no longer have a steak in? <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> but... The, the, it's, it's the whole the, uh, the emotionless aspect of it you know just separating logic from uh, separating emotion from logic yeah I, that's you know that is very appealing to me um, and it probably shouldn't be but it is very appealing to me <laughs> I, I would not want to be Manhattan for anything at all <laughs> I 
mean, being blue is not that bad. You, you, no, you no, could no. become a darker shade of blue. I could, I can make myself blue now, though. <laughs> so you're saying you can blue yourself? Yeah. Blue man group. What? That, that, I think it's a whole new context. <laughs> Only bad thing is then you know you know when you do that it's like oh so now you're not comfortable being being a light blue like now you gotta be a dark blue <laughs> please let's not do this uh, you know one of those light skin blue guys being Come on. Color. but it's it's interesting like when when Manhattan because we've kind of skipped over a lot of stuff yeah when the government when he becomes a, the a weapon of the tool of the government he's he's so complex for a guy who is pushing and putting emotion aside because he doesn't have to do anything the government wants to. He's And he's like, he's American, but Osterman was American. Manhattan is not. Yeah. Yeah. And then and he, he makes that, that that statement. It's like, you know, they're turning me into, what does he say? They turn me into something gaudy, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, and they're, they're making me a weapon, something I don't want to do, but I'm going to anyway, but why? Well, when he, when he, when he takes uh, Lori to Mars... That's what they, that's what they go there to talk about is the Earth because like yeah. to debate the the fate you know mm-hmm. of the Earth. But he allows him. He, yeah, no, no, I know what you're saying. Like I, I'm just saying, like he he's not just going with what you're saying. That he's not part of it anymore. Right. You know. Yeah. I I think it's also interesting that, and this is all just part of the fatalism where he does it because it's just what happens in the future. But I he, I find it interesting that he lies to Janie. I'm still the same person, nothing's changed, I still want you, I'll always want you, but then in the caption it says, as I lie, I hear her shouting at me in 1963, sobbing in 1966, my fingers open, the photograph is falling. Well, I think at that point he was still, I think he was still holding on to, or he still had some humanity left because he he just come back, because so we, he dies, uh, he comes back to full manifestation November 22nd. Mm-hmm. It's Christmas, that same. So it's been a month yeah, since he yeah. come back. So he still he hasn't fully grasped the whole "this is who I am" thing yet. See, Lori charges a battery, whereas like he looks at the old one and he's like, "You make me feel like Dan." <laughs> still going. No one charges Manhattan's battery like Lori. <laughs> What's the good of being an omnipotent being if you can't get it up? <laughs> Like Dr. Manhattan in a Viagra commercial. Yeah. <laughs> take this blue pill. Blue pill or red pill? Don't take the red pill. Oh, yeah, and since he's blue, you know, it's just... <laughs> Viagra by Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> what good is it to be an omnipotent being if you can't get it up? Nostalgia boner. <laughs> Remember when you used to be able to do this? <laughs> I remember getting it up like that. <laughs> sex? What's so horrible about an old man talking about sex? <laughs> I used to have sex. We like sex. Uh, it is, and it's interesting. He talks about when they choose the name Dr. Manhattan for him, and they explain that it's because of the, the atomic bomb being dropped on Hiroshima. The next panel, he says, it's all getting out of my hands. So, at, like, it's around that time that he's starting to realize, I don't have control in this situation. I'm I'm just the puppet that can see the strings. So, I think this is interesting when they're going to take the picture of him, and this is when he decides to give himself the uh, the uh, the symbol. Yeah. And they go, you need a symbol. And he says, they don't know what I need. You don't know what I need. It's I know like, what I you know, need. And, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of awesome. And then, like, the next page after that, when they're talking about him on the paper and people... I mean, talking about him on the news. And and then uh, Janie says, you've arrived. And he goes, have I? Sometimes I feel I've been here all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like, and it, what's great is, like, at that moment, he realized, you know, that... Again, this is always... is His destiny was always to become Dr. Manhattan. Mm-hmm. But it's also, like, this was always a chain of events. Like, it was always going to lead to this... Just like I can see what know what's going to happen in the future, or not really know what happens in the future because I'm existing in all time at once. It was like 
I had no control over my past at all. I mean, you know, over anything. Like, it was always this. It's like, I've always been here. I've always been Dr. Manhattan. Even before I was Dr. Manhattan, mm -hmm. I was Dr. Manhattan. And that's, that's so, like, it's so hard to wrap your mind around. Like, I don't, I'm not Manhattan yet. But the thing is, once I become him, because I'm living in all points of my timeline at once, I have always been him. Even yep. before I was him, that's just that's just weird. He was born to kill a lot of Vietnamese people. <laughs> <laughs> that was his destiny. No, no, we'll, we'll do Nixon later. We're talking <laughs> about Manhattan right now. <laughs> but he he says um, the the Pentagon says he has to fight crime because the newspapers call him a crime fighter. So he goes and blows up Moloch's underground vice den. The morality of my activities escapes me. So he doesn't think about the right and wrong of it. He just follows along the path. And that's the thing is like he doesn't go in there and like you know Moloch, you you and your guys are under arrest or you know I'm gonna take you all in. He just goes in there just blows, blows up their off. head their heads <laughs> off. Yeah, it's like, like yeah, that's the panel. Is he's yeah. just pointing at a dude, yeah. blowing his head off. It's just like he scanners him. I, I like how they have to wear him in black. Like he's got to wear a costume. You can't walk around naked and blue, son. Yeah. This is America, damn it. <laughs> You're not covering my shit up, God damn it. <laughs> and it's kind of funny that he like. He goes from, like, less and less clothing, like, from the all-blue outfit to then just, like, banana hammock to, <laughs> like, to nothing at all. Nothing at all. And, you nothing know, if you, if you look at the back of it, it doesn't cut, leave much to the imagination either. Oh, it's yeah. like, come on, really? Yeah, his, his <laughs> nom thong. Uh, yeah. I can't prevent the future. To me, it's already happening. In 1959, I could hear you shouting here now in 1963, soon we make love. Yeah, he he just he just sees the whole picture and he just rolls with it. So, what are you gonna do? Ah. This is really interesting. It's uh it's when Hollis Mason's retiring and he's there at the retirement and because you know Hollis Mason owns a uh, a mechanic uh, repair shop mm -hmm. and he mentions uh and he says uh, he goes well the new electric cars should be simpler and he's yeah. electric is like, that's right he goes they'd have appeared before but there wasn't enough lithium uh, to mass produce the uh, polycetylene batteries. Uh, of course, I can synthesize it easily. Anyway, it's been interesting meeting you. Hope you enjoy your retirement after I just killed your career and your career. <laughs> right. Like, you, you're no longer a prime fighter because I showed up and you've gotten kind of old. So the only thing you can do now is repair cars, but guess what? Now I'm going to take that away from you, too. Bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see what issue. Yeah, but, but he's completely unaware. It's four. also a matter of fact. It's like, oh, yeah, the electric cars. Yeah, they're going to put you out of business. So <laughs> issue four, and we were just talking about it, um, another case of where the colors are freaking amazing oh yeah page 14 that panel man that's there's so much going on in that right oh, there yeah. that is beautiful the blues like the it, limited it, palette yeah, yeah it's just it's it Manhattan's like the foreground the middle ground like the, where the light source is i mean that's just a master class in coloring yeah. right there and then the only like, one who's in full color makes him the focal point it's it's beautiful it's, it's yeah. genius i love the panel above that when he's talking and he says uh now it's June, a charity event with several costume adventurers attending. Friendly middle-aged men who like to dress up. I have nothing in common with them. Look, look, look how different yours looks than mine, man. Look at look at what, what yeah. printing. Look at that, man. That's like, a big transition. Yeah, because yeah, mine's yours. super desaturated. Yours is like extremely saturated. That's crazy, man. Lots That's a pink. big difference. Yeah, it's cool. I kind of like this one better. I, I do, too. There's, there's a greater differentiation in the shades of the red there than this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you can tell like his skin color is a little bit different, whereas this is just a flat. Yeah. I wonder if they recolored like it. Look at that right there, though, where see, you've got those those uh, bits of the yellow there, but it's the got... yours are different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think this is the original. These are both around the same side, same time. Oh, when they look at the back of yours, yours says it doesn't have as many quotes on it, and Lindelof isn't there. Huh. Yeah, this is the first. Yeah, this, I think that's a that's a different colored version because this is. I think this is. I bet you if you opened up your comic, this is what you'd see. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So when uh, and then the page after that, he's talking to Janie, um, and uh, and it's after uh, Kennedy was assassinated. And she's like, so you're saying you knew he would get shot? And it's John, if you, I mean, if you're serious, I mean, why didn't you do something? He goes, I can't prevent the future. To me, it's already happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in which, you know, going back to his whole thing, is like, since he wasn't there, he doesn't know the president is 
shot until he gets the news. At yeah. that time, though, he um, then he knows, like his whole, whole timeline knows that it's going to happen, but it's not because he's not directly in, involved. It's not like he knows at the moment it happens. He knows afterwards, but then they all know. It's it's they re- they do a really good job in TV series of really kind of explaining like how like how his his um his sight works his his um his you know omniscient sight works mm-hmm. and they do where they they kind of do like a thing like that where they're like they're like I won't know this until you tell me because it's it's a scene where the one uh the one character Abar is talking to this guy wearing a Dr. Manhattan mask and he says he's Dr. Manhattan and and he's like, well, you're going to tell me all about your your family in like two minutes. She's like, oh, really? She's like, how do you know that? He's like, because, you know, I'm Dr. Manhattan. She's like, okay. And um, and then they, they had this whole conversation and she's like, so you knew? He's like, no. And he's like, not, you know, not, he's like, not until you told me. He's like, but, but you, but you, you said I knew that you were going to do this. He's like, well, yes, because here you've done it, but I don't actually know the events because you haven't told me yet. Yeah. Because I'm not living, like, I'm living in the present. I'm just aware of, like, it's like, I'm constantly living in every single second. But the second, like, right now, you're dealing with me at this second. Mm-hmm. But I'm living in all of them all at one time. You know? It's, 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 it's but they, like, they do a really good job in this series of, of explaining that. Yeah. To where it's like, yeah. it's like, wow, I really, I fully grasp that. But... You know, even then, when he's talking, like you said, he lies to Janie. It's like, why does he need to lie to her? Like this, it's it's almost like he's like he's trying to make like to retain his humanity until he realizes that this is really stupid. Yeah, why am I doing this? Like, like why why am I trying to make her feel better when I already know in the end we're gonna break up? Right. Like, why right. am I trying to console her when I know this is what the, what the outcome is gonna be? I know that I'm gonna like you know fall in love with with Lori, uh, or that she and I are gonna are gonna hook up. Yeah, you know, I know yeah. that. So why am I pretending to to you know to not? It's it's interesting. Everything he says at every different time point during these flashbacks, he still speaks in the present tense. It's it's all within that moment of this is what is happening to me right now. As at my point of awareness, past, present, and future, I'm equally aware of all of it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna crude this up a lot, right? But the scene where he and Janie are fighting, yeah. and uh, he says, you know, in 1959 I could hear you shouting uh, here. Now in 1963, soon we make love, and and then she's like, oh really? Like I'm just gonna do what you want. He's like, yeah. In a minute you're gonna be sucking my dick, right? She's like, oh really? Really? In a minute I'm gonna be sucking your dick. Ding dong. She's like. Oh, baby! No, it's like... no, it's more like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like uh, it's interesting though because like he, if he if he's but I mean if he just sees the strings like he really isn't in control of himself either he's just kind of another being in the universe you know right he's but, but he's like I'm not even gonna pretend like yeah like it like I'm like oh yeah I don't I'm just like whatever if this is what you're gonna make me do I'm not gonna pretend like I enjoy it yeah but that's, that's such an asshole thing but like. Oh, yeah. He's like, you're mad at me. I knew you were going to be mad at me. And he goes, but in a minute, you know, I'm going to be laying some pipe. She's like, oh, really? So it's just going to be like that. And then she's like, oh, Billy. (laughs) But that's such a a shitty thing to do to somebody to tell them that. (laughs) Yeah, well, I, I think... I think he knows that it's like, you know, oh, it's it's predetermined that at this point I'm going to be a total asshole. Yeah. It's your John Byrne panel. <laughs> Where the bomb goes off, they go into white. It's it, Snowbird. It's funny because she says, it, like, the last thing she says there is that, John, I'm scared. I feel like there, like there's big invisible things all around me. And I don't think she would feel that way if she wasn't with him. And he it's, says, oh, baby, that's just my dick. I was going to say, that's what I was... <laughs> You know where that's going. Yeah, but it's like if she wasn't with the guy that had that kind of omniscience, she wouldn't feel like there's things that she doesn't know because the people around her don't know either. Oh yeah, no, he completely ruined her life. Even even excluding the cancer thing because that was Adrian's fault. He he just ruined her as a person. You can't function normally after you interact with somebody like John. No. And even when she's like packing up to leave, he's not. He doesn't even try to talk to like. To try to prevent her, like talk her, like no, baby, please stay. She's like, I'm leaving. Goes, I know. <laughs> I mean, okay, I want to show you this panel here, <laughs> right? And I just want you to look at that. So there's the panel, um, 
and she's packing up her stuff, and yeah. she's like, I'm leaving, John. He goes, well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but they, I mean, it's kind of um, they, it's 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 kind of messed up, man. But I mean, like he does, he he messes up all their lives, and even though it's not it's not really his fault, but yeah, he he just messes them all up yeah. just because of like this is who I am, and he's the ultimate man. He doesn't he doesn't recognize Moloch at the funeral. Says, I attend Blake's funeral, a thin man in a black coat leaves roses, then walks away. Do I know him? So it's weird. There's like, there's very specific sets of limits to his limitlessness. Well, it's because Techie outside of the last time he arrested him, he's had no contact with him. Mm-hmm. So there would be no reason for him to know what he looks like. Yeah. And then, and he, and then outside the funeral, he still doesn't have any contact with him after that. Oh, yeah. So, so, he, they, I mean, yeah, so there's no, he, they, he just doesn't put it together. But, even the sign here where she's like, it, like, Janie's mad at him and says, you know, she asks us because she's getting older. It's true. She's aging more noticeably every day. Like, he doesn't say that to her, but like, damn, he's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I wonder if it's like trying to recognize an aunt, you know, it's like, you're not, I mean, do we, I mean, you know, it's almost like y'all guys look the same to me now. It's like when you start leaving yourself from humanity, like you just don't see people for people anymore. Yeah. I think this is kind of funny. Jane, when Janie's yelling at him and she says, you tell her, you tell her what it's going to be like when her face wrinkles up and her boobs start sagging and you're still goddamn 30. And, and, and it's like, yeah, but that's the thing. You don't get it. I'm not 30. Yeah. I'm not anything. I'm not, anything. <laughs> But I know a great like, pair of tits when I see them. He's like, it's because I'm getting older. He's like, baby, no, it's it's not it's not that at all. No. And he looks in the camera, he's like, it's totally because she's getting older. God, that would make a great TV series. If you did, like, it, like like one of those like uh, like the office with Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. Like the watchman. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> but the only person that ever talks into the camera is Dr. Manhattan, because yeah. he's the only one that knows that they're being recorded. It's just, the, <laughs> it's just those interview things where they're in the side room. <laughs> No, Janie, it's not because you're getting older and he's in the interview room. Yeah, it's because she's getting older. <laughs> it's like totally, totally it's like, like, look, like, 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 look at this picture of her yesterday and look at this picture of today. You see, there's like a little bit of an extra line right there by her eye. It's like, I've been focusing on her all day. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> she just pulls up to the same picture. <laughs> he's just, um, he's just going through the motions. He can't get out of the loop. He's just like, this is just my fate. This is what I got to do. I'm just playing. I see the strings, but. We, you know, what I gotta do. I'm gonna make a theory here, is that uh, Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell, right, is actually like John Osterman. Like he graduates, he becomes, he goes to school, and then he becomes like you know this nuclear physicist <laughs> has an accident. And that's why in Saved by the Bell he can always stop time, and freeze, and then he would just talk directly to like the camera, <laughs> right? Because he he's Doctor Manhattan. That's what it is. Odenkirk as Osterman. <laughs> He's just blue. He's walking around like white eyes. Talking. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny though. He's 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 all blue. He he's got the 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 uh, banana hammock, and he's got a tie like a black tie. <laughs> So he just this is, dresses up like a magic mic dancer. He has, the, he has a bow tie and cufflinks. <laughs> and nobody notices. They just kind of like... <laughs> so I wish this was actually going to really bring up during our comedian episode because we talked about how the comedian, everything about him is all shaped from everybody else's like perspective. Mm-hmm. But Manhattan says here, um, like, Blake is interesting. I've never met anyone so deliberately amoral. Yep. He suits the climate here, the madness, the pointless butchery. As I come to understand Vietnam and what it implies about the human condition, I also realize that few humans will permit themselves such an understanding. Blake's different. He understands perfectly, and he doesn't care. I think I read that last time. Did you read it? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. It's like, but it's, it, I mean, it, it, it's such a great thing. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, I know that this is what we are as people. We're just butchers. And it's like, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Manhattan is just Alan Moore's criticism of Superman, where it's like, really, if you have something that powerful, it's not going to just be like, oh, I'll help humanity because it's good. It's like, no, humans are so far be- below his notice that it's like, why, why would I care? See, the only reason I, I say Superman makes sense to me is because he is alien. 
Yeah, and like that, that that's the only reason he would do what he did because and and, and, and you know they've, we've talked about this with the stories like there's so many where it just takes one wrong move and he goes dark you know yeah, yeah. but yeah. but then like but that's the only reason that Superman makes sense to me is because I, I think if he was just a human being it's absolutely true but because he's he's not from this planet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, I mean I I I like the aspect of Superman as the Jesus story and yeah. I think that does fit in where he is an outsider and that's why he's inherently good because yeah. he's not tainted by us by being fully human so yeah I I agree with that but Alan Moore praying to a snake statue does not see things that way. No, so, no, 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 I know. So yeah, so I think it's just his personal commentary on here's why you can't have an actual super being in the real world. So <laughs> this this next page here is when um they they retire and where Manhattan retires and uh, invite retires and they go to visit him in his Antarctic compound and he's showing uh Lori Bubastis. And she's and uh, he goes, that's Bubastis. She's a gen- genetically altered lynx. They cost rather a lot to feed, I'm afraid. She goes, I hadn't realized that genetics was so far advanced now. And he's like, oh yeah, you can create anything like a giant square. You could you could do more Bubastis. <laughs> 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 we, 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 we were talking about too, like we, we talked about how this was like a superhero story. Like going back to the Superman, like uh, this isn't so much a Superman or a superhero story because really the only person that is super in it is Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. But who do they always pair him up with? Bats. Mm-hmm. And he's not a he's not a superhero either technically. Yeah. But I mean, you know, Night Owls, well, you know, maybe in his early days is kind of the most comparative thing, but it's like it is costume people trying to be he- heroic. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. Batman falls somewhere between Night Owl and Rorschach. Yeah. It's like a mixture of the two. I'm curious, you know, because because they in the Watchmen universe, so many yeah. things are different. Look mm-hmm. how different that page is. Where it's the scene where uh, Manhattan. Yeah, even the background colors. Good completely God, different. man! Yeah. Look how he pops there, man. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. Because my mine's the same edition as Turks. Yeah. Um, well, they're both mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this this one's mine. No, I was saying, but these are both but, yeah, mine. Yeah, I was saying, they're both mine. <laughs> Um, so my po- my copy is better than my copy. <laughs> <laughs> more copy well, than copy. This one that we have with the more desaturated colors, it has uh, it, it's listing two thousand five as um, additional coloring and digital finishing. Yeah, I think I like the original better. So uh, it's interesting here. Like I was talking about the how this how the Watchmen timeline differs so much from the real world, mm-hmm. and there's no Argo. In the Watchmen timeline, comedian goes over there and frees the hostages from Tehran. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's like, oh, guy, I can only imagine like what that was. I mean, you you know, he just went in there, just guns blazing, just like, killing everybody. Oh yeah. He's a really bad guy. <laughs> the comedian's really fucked up. Hmm. But, a special thanks to Neil Gaiman, Mike Lake, Pat Mills, and Joe Orlando. Pat Mills. Pat Mills, like, I swear forever, I thought it was like a pseudonym for Alan Moore because I thought there, because Martial Law, it, it could have almost been written by him. Like, I, I almost see that as like a Moore book to a certain degree, but like, uh, it's it's not. It's not. <laughs> but I think, but that goes into, but it is English writing. That's the thing. It's like there, it does have a certain feel, and that's why it felt so fresh and new over here. Yeah. When it was what they were doing over there. Yeah, it's, it's also amazing. just so, like I, I don't think Watchmen was the first like gritty dark superhero no, story. No, but no, no. It's definitely like one of the very best executed. Where it's like, no, the only way you could really be a superhero is if there is something very, very wrong with you. <laughs> Bunch of fascists, man. Burn it all down. <laughs> the um, well, you know, and like they are all from like 2000 AD, you know, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, so they were all about. I mean, they, like I said, it was commentary on stuff in the 80s where they they hated Thatcher and great comics. I I think it's interesting how Manhattan, like I, when you get down to it, like why does he do anything that he does? I mean, like after after the events of the of the interview, 
He goes to Gila Flats. He goes to Mars. He makes the he makes the house, and I almost feel like he almost like maybe he feels like his lack of humanity is is like he feel almost like he feels like he's missing something, but he doesn't know why or how. Mm-hmm. And because one thing about me is he knows he's not a god, so he's yep. like I'm a guy that's got all this this power, and I know more than other people. And I know I can't change anything, which is what makes me not invest myself. But at the same time, I need to have some kind of investment because everything he does there is completely unnecessary. I mean, yes, I know that he's going to do it. He does it because he's going to do it. But why was he going to do it? Right. Why did he make the house? That That's all on him. He makes that based off of like how he felt. Mm-hmm. Like, why does he do this? And then he says, you know, look at this place here. Why should I save the saved Earth? Mars is thriving just fine with no life at all. Yeah. Right. So, like, what? Why is why is humanity so special when places can live and exist without having any life? And you know, and he takes her up there to show her all this because she's like, well, anything. He's just like, yo, you're gonna convince me to save the planet, but you're the one that came and got her. Mm-hmm. She didn't call you and say, John, come let's talk. Like you came to get her to say, like, you know, I want you. And it's almost like he's like, I want you to convince me. Give me a good reason why. Because almost in a sense, maybe he wants to, because he knows that if if Earth dies, if all humanity dies, then there's no way for him to retain, for regain his his humanity at all. Right, right. And without that, he's not a god, so he's got nothing. He's just a guy with these powers in a world or in a universe where nothing else exists. So his life has no meaning, and he's going to live for potentially forever Mm -hmm. with no meaning. And so, like, what would you do? Like, what what would you do? So it's like, I need to have some kind of purpose to exist. That's it. It's like, it's not that not that I need to have a purpose to live. I have a I have to have a purpose to exist. And the only thing that gives me a purpose to exist in this case is Earth. Right. So even in then, he's not even doing it for any of them. He's still doing it for himself. Because otherwise, like, what was all of this for? Like, why did I become Manhattan? Why did any of this stuff happen? If in the end. Like, I just exist for no reason at all. Mm-hmm. I've, th- I've thought of this before, like, just, I'm sure this isn't it, but it's like, I've thought about, like, talking about all the things, how horrible the world is, and that's kind of like a reflection in this, and, like, all the bad things that happen, and people evolving, and, like, looking down on other people, and, like, who, these these people need to go, but we get to stay because we're us, and you're you. Right. And, and, and yeah. then, like, that whole thing, well, like, with God, is it the only reason we're here is because if we weren't, he'd be alone? You know, what, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, yeah. it's like we need something to watch. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> so. I guess if if I understand what you're correctly, what you're asking was like you know, it's like kind of like what if like God was one of us, like mm-hmm. just like a slob, just like one of us. Like one of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, because because he's not like I'm talking about like looking just, uh, looking down on us and like maybe not participating, but just to have something, you know, like to have something to. Just a stranger on the bus trying to his way <laughs> fuck off, Turk. <laughs> oh, so you remember that song, right? Yeah, like, like, no, song. yeah, yeah. No, there was actually a show called Joan of Arcadia that was the theme song for the opening. It was, it was a pretty good show. It was basically like she was the only one who could see God. She is kind of playing on the Joan, Joan of Arc. Arc. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was actually a pretty decent show. And like, um, the uh, she was talking to God, and he come to her in different forms, and she was the only, and she wasn't sure if she was going crazy or if she, but he put give her like missions to do and like a. Uh, it was it was interesting, but did, like, did he ever give her a pair of gloves and a wrench? No, but that that's pipe? a great movie. <laughs> that's a great movie. Yeah. So I mean, frailty. If people don't know what we're talking about, yeah, frailty. McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Paxton, the late Bill Paxton. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, there's so much to Manhattan that I that I like, and then there's I, I can't say there's, there, there's anything about Manhattan I don't like. And that's just the me thing. I don't yeah. can't say there's anything about him I don't like. I, I think he's a pretty good character. So, and he's again, he's a guy that that you know, in a sense, made his own destiny, um, or his father made his own destiny. And oh, that was the other thing we too, we talked about a long time ago is that he never tells his dad that he's Doctor Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he says you know he lets his dad even when his dad dies. He um, he just lets his dad believe that John Osterman died in the intrinsic field uh, 
accident at at Gila Flats, right. and never tells him because no one ever knows. In many knows. ways, he really did. Because <laughs> no one knows that Doctor Manhattan is John Osterman, right? I mean, so and he never tells him. He just lets him believe that his son always died. It, because you know, it's again, it goes back to like. Remember that thing? But his, girl, said, but his like, girlfriend knows, right? Right. Yeah, she knows. Because when when he appears, she says John. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, that's John. I'd recognize that big blue dick anywhere. <laughs> oh, I would hope so. He's hovering off the table, so it's right there at eye level. <laughs> he he could appear closer to the ground, but he's like, no, nope, I need something she's gonna remember me by. <laughs> it's like she's gonna recognize. Um, Get a load of this nutsack, people! It can swing an election. So, so even though, like, when when it showed up there, like, in, like it was blue, and you recognize it. Uh, little known fact: it's always blue. So, uh, <laughs> but no, he never tells his dad that that he's alive. Like, you know, hey, dad, it's me. It's like, no, you said the world was going to end, and that you know, time was irrelevant, and this and that, and like, why why rub salt in the wound? You know, just let you live your life. You know, or your you know, re- remains of your life this way, as opposed to knowing that your son is now the person that is this thing here, this thing that 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 you kind of feared. Yeah. Um. Hmm. You know, he could just like alter his appearance to pretty much anything, couldn't he? Because um, he darkens his shade of blue. So he grows he, big, and shrinks, and so yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure he could to, change. He could just to. look exactly like him old, his old self. He just doesn't care. He was Vite the whole time. <laughs> it was just all, and that's the thing. It's almost like multiple man. He could have made multiple different versions of himself. Hell, he could have been all of them really, if he wanted to. Oh, if it wow. was all like yeah, because you think about <laughs> it, like if it was all predestined, you know, say say like yeah, yeah. So Adrian Vite was a guy that. The scientist got caught in an intrinsic field, became Dr. Manhattan, and then he realized what that meant. So he went back in time and created a John, this uh, John Osterman character. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Osterman did that and he created an Adrian Veidt character. So he had someone to be the check to his power balance. Comic yeah. theory. How, of, of course, however, he does say, um, after Adrian tries to tear him apart, uh, <laughs> you're me apart. Sorry, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lovely line there, what you're about to say. <laughs> I've walked across the sun. I've seen events so tiny and so fast, they hardly can be said to have occurred at all. But you, you are a man. And this world's smartest man means no more to me than does its smartest termite. That's a, I, was, I was actually thinking of the other line before that, but that's a really good one too, though. Oh, the uh, restructuring myself after the subtraction of my intrinsic field was the first trick I learned. Yeah, it's like, if it didn't kill Osterman, why'd you think it would kill me? Yeah. That's, that's an awesome line. <laughs> that that reveal, because it, um, if anybody who's read the book knows, it's very rare for them to break that nine-panel grid. And, like, that's that moment is one of the few ones where it breaks the nine-panel grid, and he just looks out the window, and there's... There's Manhattan larger than life. And he just smashes through the fucking wall. <laughs> I love that. He disappointed just... by very disappointed. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that one the last time. So good. Yeah, that that's that's fantastic. I love that. So good. But I, yeah, I, I like Manhattan and and it's such a burden for him too. The because I think he carries all that in and he doesn't have a choice, but, like, it's... I don't know if that's a burden for him, though, because he doesn't really... I mean, is he conflicted about anything? He just kind of knows. I mean, like, I don't think it bothers him. I don't think... It's not conflicted in that way, but, like, when you have someone like him that has so much knowledge and the people around you don't, and you have to kind of, like... With great knowledge comes great sorrow. Yeah, but pretty much. Because you have that, and... And you... You know that it's it's kind of like we were talking about almost like Vandal Savage when we were talking about that before, and it was like okay, there are things that I can't communicate with anybody else on. You know, they they're never going to understand to this level right here. So I'm alone in this, mm-hmm. and it's it'd be it's, it'd be trying to explain like astrophysics to a third grader. <laughs> like it's like I can't I can't get you to understand. But I really need you to understand why we can't just move to the moon, right? Except for Johnny, he gets it. He gets it. <laughs> Johnny's woke. <laughs> but and it's like and no, no matter how hard I try. So if I say, okay, well, we'll just pick this conversation back up again in like ten years. Yeah, yeah you're still not gonna understand. Yeah, you know, 
you, you and so like I'm never we're never going to get to a point where the two and I you and I are going to be like on the same intellectual level and so that just makes me alone and then I watch you do stupid shit like okay no it doesn't matter how many firecrackers you put under that bucket you can't get to the moon and it's like <laughs> I'm like I'm like I'm so damn tired of this man I'm like and it's like why I can't help you guys I can you know so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move to my my castle and just stay here like you know the rest of my life and just be like you know. You know, whatever you guys do, you do. You know, just, <laughs> so I'm like that. that that's what I'm there. It's a burden. Be like, I can't, I can't help you out, goes out because it's not because necessarily you don't really want the help, but you're just incapable of understanding it. Right, right. And that's just so frustrating for me. Well, so we've been going for like an hour yeah. and a half. So uh, we got a, about the same amount of time out of Blake too. Like, uh, yeah. There's a lot to this. I feel like we could just keep going. And we shall. <laughs> yeah. Because we got to go through the rest of them. As Manhattan himself says, nothing ever ends. <laughs> well, I, didn't th- I thought this would be split up, like, at least two characters per show. But it's just, they're all a show unto themselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think even when we get to, when we get to, to Vite and uh, Dryberg, you know, Night Owl... Like they are, they're so complex too. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Rorschach's like a two parter. <laughs> Rorschach may have to be a two parter because we're all just going to be geeking out and fanboying. So, so I actually have I something interesting came to me about Rorschach this morning, and I was like, huh. Uh, that was when I was uh, when I was thinking about it, and uh, I'd, I'd have to go back and I have to look at the book real carefully and and to see, um, but. And I'm just going to put this out here, and then you guys can think about it for when we do the episode. But Kovacs mm-hmm. is he, – he's he's just kind of blank. He's, he's emotionless. You see him marching up and down, even when he's in prison. And, you know, uh, you know he does the whole thing where it's like, you know, you, you're not locked in here with – I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Mm-hmm. And but other than that, though, he doesn't really even show any emotion. Like when he, when he like, pours the grease on the guy, he just does it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, when he kills big figure and, and and you know he just says the different things there, right? He just does it. <laughs> he only gets emotional when it's like, just do it, yeah, just do it. Well, I was gonna say the only time you ever see him really show any emotion is when he's got the mask on. Yeah, the only well, except when he dies at the end. Yeah, the only two times you see him show emotion without the mask is the first time they remove it, and he says, "Get me back my face." Yeah, yeah, like, he, yeah. And then of course, yeah, when he's telling Manhattan, just do it. I, I kind of feel like the mask is what um, is like when he's got the mask on. Then he feels like he's like he can like because you can't see it, so you yeah. he he can't emote and and be because he says things when he's wearing the mask that you I don't like, even so even all the times God this not getting to the brush yet, but even all the times you see him at different places he never acknowledges that's just because you don't know who he is, but he never acknowledges that you know. Like he cares or or whatever, but when he's got the mask on, he'll say and do stu- and do things that are, you know, like so. It's almost like Rorschach is the real him. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, that's what he says. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, like he, like he, well, that's he what, yeah, because um, he, yeah, he is. Once he put that mask on, he was Rorschach. But like he, he evolved. Like he abandoned, like Kovacs, like everything that. That he put in, like he put all of himself into Rorschach, mm-hmm. and then just left Kovacs this husk, this yeah. walking husk. That that's what happens with the kidnapping case, though. He yeah. says that that like that that's um you know before that point I was just pretending to be Rorschach. I'm not trapped but... in this podcast with you. You're trapped <laughs> in this podcast with me. Right? No. Right. He was pretending, but I mean, but at that point he's like you know like this is the like almost like a reverse Batman thing. Yeah. In a sense, but but it's like like. Kovacs doesn't. He's not even a real person, and and so I, I do, he has no emotion. He has no feeling. See, almost he, almost like he has really no mind, no thought. Right. Like he's he's just an automaton, and then the real person is Rorschach, and he's the one that thinks and lives and breathes. Right. Other than that, this guy just walks around like a you know homunculus. I right. think we've yeah. just transitioned into Rorschach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can't. We're an hour and a half in. We can't start the Rorschach yet. No. <laughs> But, but I, I just thought about that, and I was like, huh. Yeah. So it's like, just something to chew on, you know, before we get to the episode. Yeah. 
Mm. All right. Well, this is y'all's damn podcast, so you we close it up. This is the end is by ours damn <laughs> podcast, and, and on ours damn podcast, my name is Turk182, and I am always here on in the gutters with this guy right here, and your name is Wallcrawler One, the first, the original. Um, and uh, you can find us here on in the gutters comic book podcast. Where we talk about comic books and comic book related things and all things good and whatnot. Yo yo. Uh, and you can find me on social media. I mean, you can find me. You're not going to find anything, but you can find me out there. Uh, Turk182 underscore KE on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I hardly ever tweet anything because I don't really feel like they really have anything to say. Because, I mean, well, I'll just put it out there. I, I hate Twitter. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I'm there. But if you really want to find me, just come to the podcast. Yeah, that's where I am. All right, and Wallcrawler, where are you at? Um, you can find Pain and Gray's my comic, and P A Y N E, on Comicsology, and then I have an Instagram page, Walt underscore Crawler One, um, where I post pictures and the like. Of sometimes it's related to this, and sometimes it's not. So while we were doing, we were talking about this episode. You showed one of the pictures that you had done. Uh, you want to tell them about that? It was related to what we're talking about. Oh, the um, yeah, I did a regular, yeah, I did a regular show when where it was like I did all the regular show characters like Watchmen. I mean, you know, I, I think it's been done before. I'm sure it has. Like, uh, everybody does that where they change characters into Watchmen characters. But uh, yeah, it's a yeah, and that that is up on there. That, I think that picture is up on Instagram. Has anyone nice. ever done Peanuts as a Watchman with Charlie Brown as Doctor Manhattan? I feel like they would have. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's got it. I'm sure that, everything's been done. That sounds like super familiar. Yeah. Like, the first thing I thought about would be, like, doing Simpsons as Watchmen characters, but I guarantee that's been done, too. Yeah, oh, that, sure. that has been done. I'm, I'm, sure, sure, that. I'm sure everybody's so, uh, because Homer them. was Dr. Manhattan in an episode of The Simpsons for Halloween. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I see Linus, like, you know, as the uh, as Rorschach, and his blanket is, like, leftover fabric from the, from the yeah, mask. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy would be um, uh, Lori. Yeah, Silk Spectre, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, no, I've seen Charlie Brown as the comedian. I have yeah. seen that picture. Really? Yeah. I I was trying to remember it, but yeah. That's not funny. <laughs> and I do see Snoopy as being Vite with Woodstock being Bubastis, but maybe that's just me. I could see that. <laughs> well, I, I and think... And Franklin, well, he doesn't have a part in this because no black... He would be the psycholo- psychologist. No, that would, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was thinking Franklin would be the kid who reads the funny books at the newsstand. Oh, yeah. yeah, either one. I, I think Lucy's kind of have to be a psychologist, right? Huh? Lucy would have to be a psychiatrist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's like five cents. <laughs> uh, but, uh, hey. Who would, be, who would be Night Owl? There again, nobody cares about Night Owl. <laughs> <laughs> Night Owl would have to be Schroeder. Yeah. Da-da-da. No, Schroeder would be Vite. He kind of looks like... Because yeah. of the music, yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then uh, Charlie's sister would be Silk Spectre. Yeah, Sally. Yeah. Except for the whole, if we make Charlie Manhattan, that's just creepy. What about yeah. the beautiful redheaded girl? Yeah. This <laughs> is my beautiful curly hair. <laughs> that's a different character. Yeah, but it's <laughs> Frida. <laughs> yeah, would Pigpen be Rorschach? Yeah. He's, he's filthy and gross, and everybody yeah. talks about how he stinks. Yeah, because they, they do say that when they capture him, don't they? When like the police are like, this guy stinks. Yeah. The narrator could be the teacher. <laughs> and then they start playing that music where, where, where <laughs> yeah and Lori talks about how bad Rorschach smells too because she's like I hate the way he dresses I hate the way he smells I hate the way he talks no please don't, don't, don't hold back Lori please <laughs> so it's pig pins Rorschach yeah <laughs> He's got the little smelly line. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Rorschach has been spotted in grid R two R. All right. So, what are you gonna say about yourself, Akomi? Um, I'm Akomi. That's me. Uh, I got a big blue presence on social media. Uh, you can find me at Akomi Draws pretty much anywhere. In the whole world, if if it's social media, search for me there. If I'm not there, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Have you so seen the Have you seen the commercial where the 
the guys teaching the other is it's horrible, but it's like the guys teaching the other dads not to interfere with people when they're shopping at the hardware store. Oh, yeah. And the guys walking by with the bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> bloop. <laughs> It'd be great if like it was like Doctor Manhattan, bloop, bloop. I was actually at the store the other day, and this woman was walking around. And an old woman on speakerphone talking to her, I guess her husband. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, just sitting around the porch, smoking a cigarette, going to have myself a beer. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I'm like, I wish this guy really existed. I wish that was a real job. And I'm like, like what? God. Don't be that. Why, why are you talking on speakerphone in the store? No, we don't do that. I'm like, oh, God, I wish there was traffic right now so I could push you in it. <laughs> now, here's the silence on the phone. I don't have that, but all phones have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the little red phone icon. <laughs> all right. All so, right. Uh, yeah, so we will continue on. I don't know which one we're going to do next, but we are going to continue on with this, and we will see you for the next episode on Our Moms Think We're Funny. No, same bad is, time, it, same bad yeah. channel. Okay, I got you. No, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were saying this was Our Moms This is my show. Like, no, Damn it. If you can do it on yours, but not here. <laughs> not here. No, just, please do. Yeah, oh. no, no. Now I was just thinking. You just said IT. Now I was like, oh man, I said I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start like calling the podcast like ITG. Yeah. Like like run the jewel style, man. That's what we gotta do. We gotta do like a new image like ITG with like the fist and like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yours is a little bit harder to do. O M. I can't. I can't. O T W F. Yeah. <laughs> w T F. You are not listening to ITG. Yeah. <laughs> That's the shit, yo. All right. All right. Talk to y'all later. Uh, remember, live fast, love hard, and have a mask on. Bye.